One of my favorite things about having this public conversation about World War I and the role of African Americans is that it allows historians like myself to push back the start line for the Civil Rights Movement from the 1950s to its real start line. So when Reconstruction ends, that is when we see African Americans really roll up their sleeves and decide which of these fights are we going to take on. so many, their civil rights vision is rewritten with their time overseas. It isn't that France was a utopia, but they at least saw what might be possible. A substantial number of people did what we increasingly call voted with their feet, right, by saying not one more minute of this Jim Crow life for me, and at least um, followed the possibility that conditions would be different in the North. They didn't always turn out to be different, but at least, like migrants coming from overseas, they were chasing a dream, the American dream. Here in Minnesota, um, the African American population was pretty small at the time, around World War I, anywhere from around eight to 10,000. So. Minnesota, particularly the Twin Cities, really saw a trickle of African Americans during the Great Migration. A lot of them found work as porters and waiters, working in hotels, restaurants, um, as laborers, and a lot of them found work on the railroads here in the Twin Cities. We have some of the nation's firsts here. First urban architect, advancements in law, and the fact that we see this through the 20th century, I think speaks a lot about possibilities in Minnesota. But the truth is that we also have a record of road bumps. The greater discrimination was what we historians called soft bigotry. The cold shoulder in stores that make it clear that you are unwelcomed in this space. Restaurants that maybe serve you absolutely last or place you by the exit near the garbage. Those are much harder for us to calcify when we're trying to write history because the records aren't always there. They are occasionally in newspapers, which is what makes the African American press such a rich source for understanding African American life in this period. Though people may realize and accept that racism still exists, they don't necessarily see the historical roots and how profound they really are. I mean, those things aren't overcome, you know, in a few years, in a few decades, and the racial tensions that we face today, the symptoms and signs of white supremacy and xenophobia and fear of people that are the other, those have deep historical roots in our country. I think if we understand history better, we can understand the present better as well.